to the average person, making a list of all the roller coasters you've ever been on and subsequently ranking them from best to worst might sound like a tedious, mundane, and overall pointless task. But for some out there, this practice is just a part of everyday life and has essentially become what many would consider a mandatory rite of passage along one's journey to becoming a coaster enthusiast. So with a few big coaster trips on the horizon, I figured now would be the perfect time to firmly plant my flag and establish a baseline for where I currently stand with my own coaster rankings. So without further ado, and with hopes of sparking some friendly debate, here's my top 15 coaster rankings as of summer 2022. To provide some context before the countdown, I've currently been on 93 different coasters and should be able to add at least 60 plus new credits after these upcoming trips. Needless to say, it'll be interesting to see how many new coasters can make their way onto this list, as I'm sure it'll look completely different in about a month's time. It should be pretty wild comparing the before and after, so I'll most likely release an update at some point later on this year. But for now, let's get on with the countdown. Number 15, Orion at Kings Island. Up until my first ever visit to Kings Island this past April, Millennium Force was the only other Giga Coaster I've been on, so I was excited to experience B&M's take on a Giga Coaster with Orion, and of course, naturally compare two of Ohio's best coasters. I know it opened with some underwhelming reviews initially, and can sort of see why, as it's a bit shorter of a layout, and that second hill wave turn element doesn't do a whole lot for me. But the criticism seems to have died down a bit over the past two years. Overall, I thought Orion rode much better than expected, and that first drop just goes on for days. I especially love the coaster for its re-rideability factor. It has some solid airtime and more intensity than you might think with that helix, but nothing too intense to stop me from always hopping right back in line whenever I exit the ride platform. Now, how did it compare to Millennium Force? Why don't we take a look? Number 14, Millennium Force at Cedar Point. You've all heard about this one, so what more can really be said? It's one of the most iconic roller coasters ever. But when Kings Island added Orion, the debate immediately began on which Ohio Giga Coaster was better. And to be fair, I struggle to answer this question almost on a daily basis. After that first visit to Kings Island, I probably would have said Orion was better. But the more I ride Millennium Force this year, the more I can't deny its greatness. On any given day, it's truly a toss up between the two, but since we don't do ties here, I had to give the nod to Millennium Force for nostalgia's sake and a little home park bias. Although I'm pretty sure Kings Island has become my favorite park this year, but that's a whole other discussion for another day. Anyway, let's hear it down in the comments, guys, if you're on Team Orion or Team Millie for Ohio Giga Coaster Supremacy. Number 13. Mystic Timbers at Kings Island. If you watched my most surprising coasters video, then you know this was toward the top of that list for a good reason. I've had very limited experience with any modern wooden coasters, so Mystic Timbers absolutely blew me away the first time I rode it. I never knew wooden coasters could be so quick and aggressive while having steel-like smoothness. It just feels so out of control in the best way possible, and night rides enhance this tenfold. Just an overall fun, wild, and intense experience from a ride that looks so unassuming. And lastly, the ride signage is just top notch. I love that billboard way more than I probably should. Number 12, Mako at SeaWorld Orlando. Back in May, I had my first ever visit to SeaWorld Orlando as an adult. I think my parents took me there when I was like four. But anyway, I knew that Mako came highly touted as perhaps the best B&M hyper coaster out there. So I knew I wanted to get on it right away, and man, it did not disappoint. And up until recently, I did in fact have it ranked as my favorite B&M Hyper. The floater airtime is some of the best out there, and the setting along the lagoon is fantastic. Prior to the opening of VelociCoaster in June of 2021, Mako was arguably the best coaster in all of Florida, and it's still up around the top today. I just wish the trains had more than seven rows to let that back row haul through the layout a bit stronger. So ultimately, I found the front row gave me the better airtime, but let me know which spot you all prefer. Number 11, Cheetah Hunt at Busch Gardens Tampa. Here's a bit of a disclaimer. 
If you weren't already aware, I absolutely love launches. They are my single favorite coaster element out there. So if you put a launch on any coaster, it automatically receives massive bonus points in my book. With that being said, Cheetah Hunt is at number 12 because it has three launches and is such a blast to ride. And in my eyes, you can never go wrong with an Intamin multi-launch coaster. Some may call it a family coaster, and I can see why, as it's not overly intense by any means, but it does launch you up to 60 miles per hour, and it has one inversion. So definitely a very thrilling family coaster, at least. For me, it's just amazingly solid multi-launch coaster that is super smooth and seems like it goes on forever, which it actually is one of the longest coasters in Florida, coming in at over 4,400 feet of track. You really do start to feel like a cheetah hunting its prey in the wild, and I love it. Moving into the top 10, we have Lightning Run at Kentucky Kingdom. It might seem like I'm coming out of left field with this one because I don't think I've ever talked about it on the channel here, but I visited Kentucky Kingdom back in July of 2020, the first week after the park reopened due to the pandemic, and Lightning Run was the star of the show. It has so many pops of strong injector airtime, and I love the compact layout. In a way, it sort of feels RMC-like with some of its elements, and it's basically like a newer school Maverick in the sense that it looks relatively small and unassuming, but packs such an aggressive punch that will leave you wondering where in the world that came from. I can't wait to ride it again very soon to get an updated feel for how the coaster holds up, but those 2020 rides are absolute standouts in my mind. Plus, hopefully the park will actually have Storm Chaser up and running this time around. I'm still a bit salty about that over two years later. But I have faith in you, Kentucky Kingdom. I know you can do it. Number 9. Fury 325 at Carowinds So here's the thing about Fury 325. I can acknowledge that it's the best coaster that B&M has ever built, and that it's the gold standard of what a giga coaster should be. It's the tallest coaster in the world with a lift hill and has won multiple awards for best steel coaster. Simply put, it's outstanding in every sense of the word. But just because it's objectively one of the best coasters out there doesn't necessarily mean it directly translates to the overall fun factor. It's the type of coaster that has me feeling like I should be ranking it higher, but there's just something about it that doesn't hit that ultimate wow and fun factor for me as much as the coasters I have ranked ahead of it. Number 8. Diamondback at Kings Island Talk about a coaster that has grown on me in a short amount of time. Back in the spring after my first two visits to Kings Island, I probably would have had Diamondback ranked third best in the park behind Orion and Mystic Timbers. But my most recent visit in June completely flipped the script. Diamondback was running so great, I ended up grabbing 12 rides that day. The sustained flowjector airtime it was giving me that day was just plain stupid. I couldn't get enough of it. When it's running at its full potential like that, I can't help but rank it as my favorite coaster built by BNM. Number 7. Top Thrill Dragster at Cedar Point So if you recall from just a few moments ago, I may have mentioned my love for launches. Well, Top Thrill Dragster just so happens to be the third fastest coaster in the entire world as well as the second tallest at 420 feet, and launches you 0 to 120 miles an hour in just 4 seconds. Need I say more? Let's just keep our fingers crossed we see it up and running by next year. Moving on to number 6, we have Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure at Universal's Islands of Adventure. It might have a long name, and also happens to be the second longest coaster in Florida, but it's one of the most immersive theme park attractions anywhere in the world, and it just so happens to be an amazing coaster as well. Even though it's more of a family-style coaster and not super thrilling by any means, Hagrid's packs in so much variety and surprises along the way, which makes it one of the most unique ride experiences you'll ever have on any coaster or dark ride, period. It also has the most launches in the world on any coaster with a total of seven, and the ride has a few different tricks up its sleeve that I won't spoil for anyone who wants to go in blindly. Let's just say you won't find these elements on many other coasters out there, which ultimately puts Hagrid over the top for me as a world-class coaster. Alright, real quick before we dive into the top 5 guys, if you're enjoying the video so far, do me a huge favor, hit the thumbs up as it all helps with the YouTube algorithm and allows this content the ability to reach a larger audience. 
And also consider subscribing to the channel if you're looking for more content just like this. Number five, Copperhead Strike at Carowinds. This coaster flat out surprised the hell out of me. I can't say I've ever experienced much hang time on a coaster before, but after riding Copperhead Strike, I learned that I apparently just love dangling from my seat since it's all over the place on this ride. The Jojo roll, the loops, and the cutback are outstanding. And did I mention this also is a multi-launch coaster? Throw in an ample amount of unexpected ejector airtime and you have the formula for one amazingly fun and wacky coaster. It's just so unique and I've never been on anything quite like it, which is why it made my top five. But to be fair, it's a pretty flimsy number five as I'm sure a few of the coasters on my upcoming trips will have a good shot at taking over this spot. Number four, Maverick at Cedar Point. Quick note about my top four. I currently hold these as sacred. These top four coasters are way more ironclad than anything else on any spot in my rankings. Even with all of the bucket list coasters I'll be riding soon, like El Toro, The Voyage, and I-305 to name a few, I don't think any of them have a realistic shot at replacing any of these four. And of course, I hope I'm dead wrong. But every time I ride any of these four, I have that thought pop into my head and think, man, maybe this one really is my number one. It's a true final four battle on repeat in my mind constantly, but today we'll put Maverick at number four. With a launch lift hill, lightning quick transitions, great ejector airtime, and an amazing mid-course launch, there really is nothing to criticize about Maverick other than maybe the trim break after the launch. It's a fantastically fun and wildly whippy ride that I've loved ever since my first ride back in 2007, and I think it gives the best night rides in all of Cedar Point. Number three, Iron Gwazi at Busch Gardens Tampa. It's weird, I still don't think I've fully processed the true power and greatness of Iron Gwazi even after being three months removed from my eight rides over two different days at Busch Gardens Tampa. I approached this coaster way more casually than I probably should have in the sense that I just sort of assumed it would be a top three coaster for me. And then after my first ride, I just sort of casually thought, yeah, that was great. Totally in my top three, just like I thought it'd be. I don't think I fully appreciated everything in the moment right then after that first ride in the back row, but thankfully a front row night ride finally woke me up out of my coaster coma later that same night. Again, I've toyed around with considering this for number one, but I'm keeping it at three for now since that's where it's been all along. And if you want to see my initial reactions from that first ride and night ride, I have that in another video. So I'll go ahead and leave a link down in the description. Number two, Steel Vengeance at Cedar Point. I don't think any other coaster out there will ever be able to match the feeling I had when I got my first ever ride on Steel Vengeance back in 2020. That back row ride was my first introduction to a Rocky Mountain construction coaster, so of course I had to start out with the best there is. The hype and anticipation for this ride was enormous and somehow still exceeded any expectation I could have had. The amount of airtime this coaster has is just ridiculous and you really do feel like you're flying out of your seat for about half the ride. It has by far the best first half of any coaster out there, in my opinion. I do believe wholeheartedly this is the best roller coaster I've ever been on, but that doesn't mean it's my overall favorite. I really can't say enough on how amazing this ride is, though. And even as I'm saying this, I'm almost a little shocked I don't have it at number one. But if I reach deep down and am truly honest with myself, I don't really think there is a question of what roller coaster is my one true favorite. Number one, Jurassic World Velocicoaster at Universal's Islands of Adventure. As soon as I saw this coaster being built on my 2019 visit to Universal Orlando, I knew it would be one of the best out there because one, Universal had just opened up Hagrid's and did such a fantastic job teaming up with Intamin for that coaster, and two, Intamin was building this new coaster. Hence, you can never go wrong with an Intamin launch coaster. And three, it's at Universal, so the theming will be unlike anything else. And let me tell you friends, I can't stress this enough, theming matters. And here's why. So back last November, I was able to ride Velocicoaster eight times on my Universal trip, and it grew on me a bit. 
I figured if it could rival Maverick, then it would be a big win for Universal. And it definitely did rival Maverick, but I still had a tough time putting it ahead of Maverick in my rankings. But by the end of that trip, I finally caved and had to admit that, yeah, Velocicoaster is better, but still doesn't touch Steel Vengeance. Fast forward to my two separate trips to Universal this past April and May, and Velocicoaster just continued to grow on me more and more to the point I started questioning if it should be in my number one spot. Well, after 38 rides over those two trips, I finally had to give in once again and put it at my number one spot. It's funny, I never really made this connection before, but the ride is a lot like the Velociraptors it's themed after. It just sort of sat there quietly hunting me down for over a six month stretch, and then bam, before I knew what was going on, it just attacked me from all angles and I was rendered helpless to its number one worthiness. And at the end of the day, what does this ride have over the others? It's the theming. It really is what sets this ride apart and it's impossible to ignore and gives Velocicoaster a trump card over all standard amusement park coasters. The entire experience is just special. For Steel Vengeance, I can drive two hours to Cedar Point anytime I want over the summer and just ride it. And of course, I consider myself lucky to live so close, but with Velocicoaster, everything is just more special. Making a trip down to Florida feels more special. Being at Universal always feels extra special, but throw in a world-class coaster with top-notch theming, well, that's about as special as it gets. So there you have it, my top 15 favorite coasters as of right now in the summer of 2022. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Let's hear it down in the comments. Am I losing my mind where I have some of these, or are you right there with me? And just a reminder to hit that thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. And of course, subscribe to the channel for more theme park news, tips, tricks, and adventures. As always, I've been Mike with Trout Takes, and we'll see you all soon.